without the run support. So here's what things look like right now. Florida FAU. Auburn already waiting in the wings. They won the Raleigh Regional against North Carolina State. So it'll be either Florida or FAU against the Auburn Tigers. We took a deep breath and now we are set for baseball. Alongside Nick Belmonte who played for the Gators for 1976 and 1977. I'm Steve Lennox. We're delighted to have you on board. We've had weather delays. We've had a little bit of everything. FAU taking the field tonight for the fourth time in an elimination game. But Nick, now the Gators are in the yeah. same boat. Well, they're in the same boat a year ago against Bethune-Cookman. They ultimately won that game, went on to win the College World Series. Kevin O'Sullivan, I'm sure he went to his team and said, hey, look, we were ranked number one the entire season pretty much. Just play your game. You'll be fine. And John McCormick at FAU, he beat the Gators with soft tossing pitchers. He's starting another one here in this game. Should be interesting. We've got baseball in Gainesville. Game seven from McKeithen Stadium. Three times a national number one seed has been knocked off in a regional, the last UCLA in 2015. Owls and Gators. First pitch from Gainesville is next. The NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by the Capital One Venture Car. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by the Jurassic Chomp Blizzard. Only at your DQ, at participating locations. And Angry Orchard Hard Cider, naturally refreshing. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals from Gainesville, presented by Capital One. Folks are ready to go, and so is Jack Lefwich, who gets the start. The freshman from Orlando, Florida, on the mound in a decisive Game 7 for the defending national champion, Florida Gators. Yeah, he was a kid that worked his way into the SEC rotation earlier in the year, 92 to 96 on the fastball. He's got an up-tempo delivery. Ultra-competitive kid. Had a good start at the SEC tournament, so he's hot right now. Lineup for FAU. John McCormack going with Tyler Frank and Cody Wilson, the top two hitters. Wilson has been outstanding. David Miranda enters. He's now hit safely in 11 straight games going back to the regular season. Kevin Abraham in the lineup. He's homered in the regional so far for the Owls. Jack Leftwich ready to go to work on the mound. Tyler Frank, yes, we're in the first inning. Yes, we're in the first batter of the game. Frank with the uniform pants from game six earlier takes a first pitch strike. Those are the gamers, folks, right there. <laughs> No, they're just getting right, right back in this. They're, they've been having a lot of luck early in the ball game. 11 first inning runs. Game six, the first of their four games where they didn't score in the first inning. But they did erupt for five in the third against losing pitcher Jackson Kowar. Singer, Kowar, you can call them veterans as juniors for Kevin O'Sullivan, but left which... This is his first experience in something like this. Got to taste the SEC tournament just last week, so he does have some post-game experience. But a guy that has that good downward angle. And sometimes he'll get on a run and dominate. Tyler Frank has four hits in the regional so far, but he's four for 21. Two hits in one inning and a victory against Columbia. That was on Saturday. That was the first elimination game for FAU. John McCormack hoping for one more victory. Their 44th on the season would send them to the Super Regional for the first time since 2002. Gators trying to get back to the Super Regional round for the 10th time in school history and for the eighth time under Kevin O'Sullivan. There's John McCormack. His hitters have grounded, uh, grinded out at bats. His pitchers have simply gotten outs. Frank doing a nice job here. Yeah, you want your leadoff guy to go ahead and start fouling some pitches off, get that pitch count up early, but and more importantly, let the guys in the dugout see what Leftwich has. Major League Baseball draft tonight, the first two rounds televised on the MLB Network, Frank with a leadoff walk to open up the ball game. 
And they're picking up right where they left off with a leadoff guy getting on and getting something going in the first inning. Jonathan India, third baseman, SEC Player of the Year, went fifth overall to the Cincinnati Reds organization. Brady Singer, who was projected to be a top five pick in the first round, went 18th overall to the Kansas City Royals. Swing and a miss, the runner goes, throw down to second base, safe. Frank got in there ahead of the tag. And he's now in scoring position. And a guy at the leadoff spot that doesn't steal a lot of bases, only his fourth on the season, but this is telling you something right here. John McCormick is playing aggressive baseball right out of the chute. Did he get his hand in? Looked like the tag went up between his arms. Let's see this right here. Watch if he gets it between the arms. Mark Wagers, the second base umpire. One strike count on Cody Wilson, who's simply been terrific during the course of this regional so far. Wilson, nine for 17, four extra base hits, including two home runs, six runs batted in. He's walked three times. He's been hit by a pitch. One of those home runs against Jacksonville in the first inning inside the park home run. Two batters in, they had a 2 nothing lead. Wilson with a runner at second trying to give FAU an early lead against Leftwich and the Gators. Not biting on that slider right now. You're thinking Cody Wilson, his job right here, get that runner over to third base with less than two outs. But let me tell you, I think John McCormick said, look, son, if you get your pitch, go ahead and turn on it and drive it. But they've been counting on him for power. Wilson, like Frank and the rest of the teammates for FAU, wearing the same pants in game two, but Wilson probably woke up with his pants like that this morning. He's out on strikes, one down. This is a nice, tight slider. Watch this. It looks like a fastball out of the hand and just dives away. Great pitch. He's been through the SEC fire this year. As a starter, 22nd overall appearance, 10 in a starting role, 66 innings, and 68 strikeouts, and just 18 walks. Entering this one, he's added a walk and a strikeout to his ledger. David Miranda at the plate. Miranda, an 11 game hit streak. One for five. Two RBIs, two runs scored, and the game six victory for the Owls. Now 74 hits on the year. Four regionals around the country going to a decisive seven game. Miranda's one of the guys on the ball club, keeps him loose. Kevin O'Sullivan, he knows he's got good pitching. He's got Michael Byrne that he could probably extend. John McCormick, he's about run out of pitchers. He's, he may have to throw a few people he's thrown in the last 24 hours. Peden has worked in three of the games so far for FA, FAU. And we tinkered with it, and maybe he did as well. We thought Drew Peden last night, remember, we'll tell you this now. Last night, the suspended game, or the uh, the game that had the delay over five hours, Peden closed out the game against Jacksonville. They were going to pitch him if game six was last night. Yep. And you thought maybe they would toy with that idea tonight. Maybe Peden has a couple of batters. Let me tell you something. If it means advancing to a super regional, you may see Peden late in this ballgame. So with that, could we see Zach Schneider, who went five innings, longest outing of his season? That I don't think we'll see. He really went above and beyond. If Schneider went to you as the head coach, there's Kevin O'Sullivan, and said, bring me in during an inning, I can get a batter. Well, it's because Schneider throws from that low arm slot. He could be a little more resilient. He could talk him into it. Eric Rivera will bat with two on and one down. Left which. Again, just 18 walks over 66 innings entering this one, walking two here in the first inning. Zach Snyder, all conference USA this year, went five innings through 100 pitches. Runner takes off for third, throw down, and safe. And he was crossed up right there, no question about it. 
That's why that ball was boxed. Duran starting again behind the plate. You can see right here, he's expecting a different pitch. Yeah, you can see, he didn't know what I was throwing. And heads up by Frank. Kind of a break that Miranda didn't take off for a second. Keeps the double play in order. Well, just Pass a little ball. reset here. Pass ball on Jonah Duran. Duran yeah, made his first start in the SEC tournament. He started every game for Kevin O'Sullivan behind the plate, including this doubleheader. That was a slider. He was expecting fastball. Duran back behind the plate. Corner situation with Rivera standing in against Jack Lefwich. Duran in only his fifth start on the year. Gator slugger and catcher J.J. Schwartz still nursing that broken finger. His legs have to be heavy, catching every inning so far. I mean, yeah, your first steady competition's in a regional, and he's been great. Did have a day off, you can say Sunday, because we did not have game six. Florida played the early game and beat up on Columbia Friday, came back Saturday night with a one-run victory against Jacksonville to go into the winner's bracket on Sunday. But these two teams were told late last night after the completion of game five that game six would be pushed back to Monday. Possible slider here to get them to roll over. And there it was. Game time temperature 81 degrees. Light breeze. Stays alive at two and two. Came back to the slider. It's going to be interesting to see how they go here. Two sliders. He's sitting on it now. Do you change the eye level and come in? Bust him inside. See if he goes that route. Or do you stay with the slider? Fastball in, he fought it off. That was a. You like the location? Absolutely. That's where you want that pitch. You just threw him two sliders. You're not going to get hurt there. And that was a nice foul ball right there, fighting a good pitch off. Count runs full. Boy, that pitch right on the corner just missed. Tennessee Tech has advanced, winning two against Ole Miss and Oxford. So this is the last regional still to be decided. Great at bat here, and it will continue for Rivera. And I like what Leftwich is doing. He's hitting his spots inside, outside. You tip your cap to the hitter to keeping this thing alive. He puts it in play, stays out of a double play. It's usually, in this situation, going to be an RBI. Three walks in the inning, and the bases are loaded as he tried again to go back outside. That was a great at bat. Pitch on the corner. Duran tried to bring it in, but it was a little bit outside. This is an FAU team that FAU team we've seen in this regional what they do in the first inning. They put pressure on. Kevin O'Sullivan sending the message from the third base dugout. Hey, calm down. Duran going out there. And the batter, Gunnar Lambert. Lambert starting at first base. Kevin Abraham gets a start behind the plate for John McCormack. Bases loaded, one out, one ball, no strike count. Major you got to respect Lambert, a guy with power. You're trying to keep it down, see if he can get a ground ball here. 
final game of the 16 regionals right here in Gainesville. A ball and a strike on Gunnar Lambert. I was saying Major League Baseball draft tonight. Leftwich was drafted out of high school in the 39th round in 2017 by the Detroit Tigers organization. Went the college route. A ball and a strike, one down, base is full. Soft liner to left field. That's going to drop in for a base hit and score a pair. And farted Lennox up early against Leftwich and the Gators, 2 0 here in the first. And we've seen him do it the entire regional. That ball was fought off, finds a home in left field. Miranda, the runner at second base, sees it early, and he's, he's right on the heels of Frank. He knows he could take off because no one's going to get it. And this is coming off the heels of a victory less than an hour ago. FAU has now scored 13 runs in the first inning here in the Gainesville Regional and 56 runs in the first inning this season. How about that? They've given their pitchers the lead first in every game. Tommy Mays, he started the game against Columbia on Friday night. Did not last long in that one. He's got a fresh arm. Batter Joe Montez. Three walks and a single by Lambert. Plating a pair. Montez, five hits and 17 at bats and six runs batted in. Take a look at what FAU has done in the first four innings here in Gainesville. 33 total runs, but just two from the fifth inning on. Duran blocking that one at the plate. And by them doing that, that has allowed John McCormick to surgically use his bullpen because he's been ahead and been ahead by multiple runs to where he could piecemeal it the way he wants. Not a lot of pressure on the relievers. Well, they're feeling it right now, but those young men better figure out that they got a long way to go. Good to be enthusiastic, though. They got to be excited what's going on. Up two, looking for more. Montez and Wilson both with six runs batted in. Sends one fouled on the first base side. Last year, Bethune Cookman took Florida to the seventh game. The only difference is they played the next day. It wasn't one right, right after the other. So right. the shock of losing to Bethune Cookman, they got to sleep on. Refresh. Montez continues a tough at bat. Florida trying to advance to the Super Regional for the 10th time in school history. It would be the second trip to the Super Regional for Florida Atlantic. They advanced in 2002. Rivera takes his leadoff second. Left which already approaching 35 pitches here in the first inning. Three and two the count. Pitch count is not really at issue here because well, at it, some point if he's not going well, they're going to give him the hook. Well, it is when you got 34 pitches in one it, inning because now you're susceptible to leaving a pitch up. You're just going to get tired. Leftwich wins the battle. That's big. He just rear back and let that one go. Challenged him. Watch this. You okay, big boy? Try to hit it. Ninety plus fastball for sure. Now he's got one more big out to get. Go, 
Jared DeSantolo seven hits in 15 at bats. Two doubles and two runs batted in. That strikeout might have been what left with left which needed yeah. as he just threw that fastball right by him. Yeah, got the crowd back in it. And the Gators got a feed on that crowd tonight. Two strikes on DeSantolo. He's the seventh batter to come to the plate here in the first inning. A lot of these fans have been here since 12 o'clock today. We just passed the 10 o'clock hour at the top of the 10 o'clock hour here in Gainesville. India at third, waits on the hop, takes it at the belt. Offline throw. Now they've got the runner caught up, but Rivera is able to get back to the bag. Florida, in their loss earlier tonight, had three errors. That's the second in two games for Jonathan India. And they're coming on the throwing variety. And it's just arm angle here. He's got it. Seems like he has it, but he's not getting on top. He's just sidearming it. Randy Smith had to come off the bag, alertly looking towards third. Rivera had rounded third, thinking that was going to be out number three, and was able to get back to the bag. Richie Nietzsche at the plate. Defense did not help Florida pitching in game six earlier. They had three errors, as I mentioned. 40th pitch of the inning, and he's battling. Needs a three home runs, 14 runs batted in, has a home run here at McKeithen Stadium during the regional. Duran sending out the signs to Leftwich, trying to leave the bases loaded. Ahead one and two. He's blown two by him here. Let's see if he sticks with the fastball. That is not usual of a Gator defense. They're usually in the top three of the nation under the tenure of Kevin O'Sullivan. Entered the regional fielding at 979. Called strike three, inning over. Left which strikes out three in the inning, but FAU up to nothing as we go to the bottom of the first. Two nothing Florida Atlantic as the Gators come to the plate in the bottom of the first inning, FAU going with Nick Swan, who takes the 2-0 lead to the mound. Well, for the second time in this regional back-to-back, -back, Coach McCormick said, I'm going to throw a pitcher that has not started all year because they're running out of pitchers. 2-0 on the year. This is his 19th appearance, the first 18 in relief, and he's another soft tosser. I mean, he's going to throw off speed, and that's what really got the Gators back on their heels in the first game. You can see that 82-83 gets a lot of movement, handles the running game fine. Let's see how it goes. The key for him, though, throw strikes. Swan making the start. This is the Florida lineup that he will face. As Deacon Lickbit comes up to the plate. India and Dalton red hot in the first two victories, but combining to go 0 for 8 in the game six loss earlier tonight against the Owls. Smith is in at first base. That's really the only position in the lineup that Kevin O'Sullivan has toyed with and, and moved in and out with Brady Smith and Keenan Allen. Everyone else has pretty much been in their spot in the lineup and position-wise in the field. Deacon Lippett starting his 49th game of the season for the Florida Gators. Off the inside corner. Lippitt overall in the season hitting at 292, has 57 hits. And 22 extra base hits up and in near the letters. 
important here to Gators put something together and answer. Shut down opportunity here for FAU, and that would really be a tone setter. They need something to energize them. Lippis, opposite way. Rivera backpedaling a couple of steps, one down. Base is empty, and Nelson Maldonado will come to the plate. I mean, the pitcher Nick Swan has only pitched 24 innings this entire year. So you wonder how far he can go. I'm sure there's a plan in place to get him and maybe have him go three innings and see how it goes. What are you thinking on the other side with Kevin O'Sullivan and Jack Leftwich, who threw over 40 pitches and faced eight hitters in the first inning? Well, if he falters in the near future here, you got Mace, you got Jordan Butler, and of course, he's probably going to go to Michael Byrne about as early as he's gone to him all year. So what would that be? You know, I could say early as the sixth or seventh. And there's Michael Byrne. He will factor in this ballgame. The best closer in the history of the University of Florida. Recorded the save Saturday night in a 3-2 victory against Jacksonville. 14th of the season, 33rd of his career. Fought off and looped in the air, shallow left center field. Wilson takes care of it, retiring Maldonado. Wilson covers so much ground out there. We've seen it in this regional. Swan making quick work of the first two batters. John McCormack, head coach of FAU. He waited and held his best starting pitcher until Sunday, and he told us that he had informed Jake Mednick that he might not pitch in the regional based on the strategy that he was putting together. And when they lost that first game, it didn't look good. Then he held them back one more game, and it's worked out exactly the way he's wanted. He's in his seventh game. Florida and Lennox responded on Saturday with an 11-2 victory against Columbia. Chasing Lion starter Jordan Chris in the first inning. Mark Nowotnik gave FAU four scoreless in that outing. Trying to come back after losing. Game one on Friday, Duke did it. The Blue Devils are moving on to the Super Regional round for the first time in school history. Duke won game six in Athens earlier today against Georgia and then came back and won the second game. Griffin Conine homered in both. I'm going to get in the mind of John McCormick here and say he's got a guy, Vince Coletti, who's got 15 starts. He hasn't seen an inning in this regional. Why is he not in this game? And I'll tell you why. He wants them to continue to have a pitcher throw the off-speed stuff. That's what beat Florida in the first game. 3-1 to India, who went 0-4 for 4 in game six earlier. Fly ball, Wilson. On the warning track, side retired. Nick Swan retires the side. One, two, three in the home first inning. Two nothing Owls as we go to the second. Tickets punched so far. We've got 15. This game here in Gainesville will give us our 16 and super regional round. Florida, FAU, Auburn. Waiting on the winner of this one. Auburn Tigers, Casey Mize taken first overall, one and one by the Detroit Tigers earlier tonight in the Major League Baseball draft. We'll touch on that throughout the course of the evening. Kevin Abraham, the hitter. Nick, he's a great story. We've told it yep. over the weekend. Kevin Abraham had a shoulder issue in 2016. His head coach, John McCormack, already was in the process of his battle against cancer. Well, he went through tests, and it was revealed that Kevin Graham had a tumor in his right shoulder. So John McCormack sat down with Kevin and his father and the doctors, and they gave the news. And Kevin Graham gave the response you hope everyone can have with that initial yeah. news of, okay, let's go, let's win this one. Yeah, he said, how, 
what do I do now? Let's get started. That was his first thing that he said. And John McCormick actually battled cancer in back in 2015 when he was here at the Gainesville Regional, figured out there was a little something going on wrong. Turned out to be diagnosed with cancer. And, and these two have been bonding ever since. They're, they're kindred spirits in that way, and they're both uh, in remission right now. It's been amazing. Opportunity on Thursday on the workout day for the four teams here in Gainesville to talk with Kevin Bra Graham for a few moments. Sends one back our way. Abraham, pardon me. There we go. Leading things off here in the second, 9 1 2 do up against Leftwich. Leftwich. Walk three in the first, struck out three in the first, and there's strikeout number four. Boy, he's he's looking good on that fastball. He's putting it right where he wants. And he, that was a great test, him coming back last inning. Freshman on the ropes in a must-win situation, bases loaded. And he turned it on and got him out of the inning with just giving up two runs. It looked like that was going to be a big crooked number. Back to the top. And Tyler Frank, he walked, scored in the first inning. He walked and stole second, moved to third on the pass ball. And scored on a two-run single by Gunnar Lambert. And left, which struck out Montez, and that seemed to get him on track. DeSantolo, he should have been out of the inning. He yeah. reached on the error by the third baseman, India, and that kept the inning alive. And that was the most impressive part, that he settled down after that. India picks it up in foul territory. Didn't rush the throw. Frank retired as he gets his former high school teammate at America Heritage here in the state of Florida. And he knows that he possesses quite an arm. So just keep it in front, relax, pick it up, and gun it across. The arm angle a lot better on this one because he has a plus arm. Great India. job right there. Knocks it down, picks it up barehanded. I have to kind of sling that one, too. And you, you could see that arm strength is there. Drafted fifth overall earlier tonight by the Cincinnati Reds organization in the Major League Baseball draft. Wilson at the plate, struck out against Leftwich in the first inning. Abraham struck out. Frank retired on a grounder to third. And you're not out of the woods yet. This guy's got great power. Got to be careful. Two Keep home everything runs. down to this guy. Two and two. Number one national seeds to fail to move past a regional. Vanderbilt, 07, Oregon State, and UCLA in back-to-back -back years. Well, you mentioned Wilson's power, but if you walk him here, he's a threat to run. He can be in scoring position. All of a sudden, you can be looking at a dicey proposition. Center field, Nick Horvath. Left which works a one, two, three, second. Bard Atlantic leading as we go to the bottom of the second, two nothing in Gainesville. Nick, do you know the name of this dance that older brother is trying to teach younger brother? <laughs> Look at this. That's Finn O'Sullivan to the right. Kevin O'Sullivan's son. Is that the soldier boy? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Okay. I thought maybe they'd work, be working on the swing path. Will Dalton held in check earlier tonight in game six, 0 for 4. Dalton, 18 home runs, 57 driven in, rounded out three times and struck out in his four at bats. What does Dalton have to do because of all the hitters in the Florida lineup, he seems to be most affected or one of the most affected by the soft stuff. 
Yeah, he was just chasing in the first game, going after early sliders. And look, that pitch was 78 miles an hour. And you've got to make the adjustment of keeping your bat back. The FAU pitching staff in this regional tonight, soft stuff, soft stuff, stop. <laughs> hit your spot, hit your spot, hit your spot, and it's been working. And that's why he's out there instead of Vince Coletti, the guy with 15 starts on the season. Three ball, two strike count on the leadoff hitter here in the Florida second. So if you're Coletti, what are you thinking? Oh, you're saying go get him Nick Swan. I want to go to a super regional, but Coletti better get himself ready because I don't think Nick Swan's going to go the whole game. He's only pitched 24 innings this entire season. Worked a one, two, three first inning. Dalton able to stay alive. I think John McCormick was thinking, look, we got him with soft stuff in the first game. I'm not going to throw my guy that gets 90-91 out there. That's something that they can hit, and that'll catch him on fire early. Let's see if I can entice him to chase soft stuff. Maybe they'll be anxious, but the best thing that happened to FAU tonight was that early lead. Because then as a hitter, you become a little more anxious when you're trying to chase a lead, especially in an elimination game. So you've talked about that with the lead, more options. Does that also give them the ability to give a little bit of a longer leash to his pitcher on the mound? Well, his, his pitcher right here, like I said, 24 innings the entire season. How much can he actually go? He's going to take it inning by inning, I'm sure. Look, if he's got one hit in five innings, he's going to keep him out there as long as it takes. But there is a plan in place, one would think. And would Drew Peden end up coming back in sometime in this ball game? He was very effective in the first game to shut down the Gators. Well, Brady Singer and Jackson Kowar, two terrific junior pitchers for the Florida Gators, and teammates for three years here in Gainesville. Nick, if they both sign their first pro contracts, guess what? They're going to do it with the same organization. Kowar has been selected by the Kansas City Royals. Wow. Jackson Kowar that? taken 33rd overall. I guess they're rooming in spring training. Off the glove of Nitsa. Ball rolls into short center field. Dalton aboard with a leadoff base hit here in the second. I think he found the approach. They're working him away. Keeps his hands back and rides it that way. That's as good as you're going to do based on the way they're pitching you. And Nitsa looked like he had it in his glove and it just squirted away. Look, the Gators are going, okay. Here we go. Austin Langworthy. Langworthy, game seven of the regional last year, earned the victory against Bethune Cookman. And also hit a big three run home run to break a nothing nothing tie in that game. Two hits and three runs batted in against Bethune Cookman. Well, the stage is set from Williston, Florida, just down the road. One thing to note, prior to the regional getting underway on Friday, Florida had dropped six of its final seven. One one game in at Hoover and then lost two against Arkansas and LSU. Towards first base. They get the out at second, back to first. Horvat, or uh, Langworthy able to beat it on the return. Swan did get over there. Langworthy hustling down the line. Dalton out, 3-6. Yeah, that 3-6, one double play is about as hard a play as you can make defensively. Swan falling off to the third base side, but like you said, he got over there. But Langworthy runs Pretty good down there, left-handed hitter. And Lambert, we're seeing him at first base for the first time. He now holds on Langworthy at first. And Blake Reese, a two-run home run in game six earlier tonight for the Gators, stands in. He hit it from the left side, switch hitter. He struck out in his one at bat from the right side. Against Weston Clemente in game six. That's a pop. Time was not called. 
Nick Swan called for the block. That puts Langworthy in scoring position. And he knew it. He started, stopped. That's about as easy a ball call as you're going to have in the entire <laughs> season as an umpire. I think he tried to get away for it for a moment, looking away from the home plate area. Watch this. I mean, he Maybe knew right no in the middle of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Langworthy, <laughs> who wants it? There's four guys out here. They all had it. Hey, even Langworthy called it. <laughs> the bleachers were on that one. Slowly hit, charging, barehanded play by Frank, throws to first, and he gets Reese. Wow. That's a do or die when you barehand it. Watch this nifty play coming in. Barehands a spinning ball. That ball hits that lip funny, too, and he still throws it across his body with a little hair on it. Pitch ate him up inside. And that was part of the problem. The ball took a while to get to the shortstop. Tyler Frank. By far the best play he's made in this regional. Called upon as a freshman. They had injuries behind the plate as Brady Smith stands in. John McCormack used him behind the plate in 2016. Back to his natural middle infield position. He's played second, has played short throughout the year. They committed to it, and he's been there all season long. 13 home runs on the season. We haven't seen that power, but it's in there. Brady Smith, pinch hit in game six. Stayed in the game for Keenan Bell. Smith grounded out as a pinch hitter in the sixth inning and then struck out looking in the eighth. Well, the Kansas City Royals taking Singer and Kowar. Jackson Kowar taking 33rd overall. And the Royals also have the 34th overall pick, compensation pick from the Padres. Last offseason, they signed Eric Hosmer. Kind of curious who they take there. Maybe another college arm. Casey Mize going first overall to the Detroit Tigers. The first five picks this year were college players, Division I players. Last year, the first three were high school picks. Smith walks, setting first and third. Mize again, going first overall, Jonathan India, selected fifth overall by the Cincinnati Reds. Singer and Kowar, future teammates. And they will all tell you, they will give thanks to that coaching staff. Kevin O'Sullivan, Brad Weitzel, Craig Bell, Lars Tate, for helping them become first round picks. Horvath stands in. Nick Horvath, center fielder for the Gators. Nick Swan worked a 1 2 3 first inning. Horvath with a knack for getting big hits. Abraham, the catcher, out to the mound for a moment. Florida. Singer, SEC Pitcher of the Year. Jonathan India, SEC Player of the Year. Head coach Kevin O'Sullivan, Coach of the Year in the SEC. Florida had six players drafted in 2017. Alex Fiedo, Dalton Guthrie, Mike Rivera. The Notables. Fiedo, first round pick of the Tigers. Six players for Florida taken in the top 100. In 2016. Tying run on base. With Horvath at the plate. Nice play. Frank goes to second. They get the force out and the inning is over. 
Tyler Frank has been somewhat quiet with the bat, but Nick flashing the leather here in the second, helping out Swan. This is an amazing play. He may have won earlier in the inning. This is a run saver. This was huge. FAU stays in 2 0. CAA Baseball Regionals is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by the all new, totally remixed Volkswagen Jetta. And New York Life. We know that life doesn't fit into any one plan, so start a plan that flexes with yours. Bart Atlantic on top 2-0. Uh, against the Florida Gators, game seven of the Gainesville Regional. Both teams now are facing elimination. FAU's doing it for the fourth time. They came to the ballpark on Saturday, needing a win to keep their season alive. They picked up a victory against Columbia. On Sunday, after Jacksonville lost on Saturday night to Florida, FAU early game Sunday game five here in Gainesville winning in a game that had a delay of over five hours due to weather. Miranda Rivera Lambert Nick due up here in the third inning for the Owls. Yeah and this is very important I'll tell you why you don't know how long Swan can go. He's doing a great job. They're starting to get to him a little bit hard hit balls. It's time to tack on runs if you're FAU. You can't stay dormant here. Miranda like Wilson in front of him in the lineup has gotten on base throughout 11 game hit streak so hits in every game so far for the Owls left which has really established the fastball and he did it late in the first inning yeah late in the first inning when he was on the ropes that's a tribute to what this kid's all about. Kevin O'Sullivan at one point we saw Kevin from the third base dugout just saying put the brakes on settle down yeah, he stayed relax. with him. Yeah. yeah that's paying off too. But he's got a big pitch coming up here. Flip at the shortstop. Makes a catch. First batter retired by Leftwich here. In the third inning. For more coverage of the Division I baseball regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Kevin O'Sullivan and the athletic trainer heading out to the pitcher's mound. That's Chris Koski, home plate umpire. They saw something with Leftwich. Yeah, you know, right before he took that pitch, he took a deep breath and then he let it fly. right here he's just pacing himself and that's all I thought it was he was just slowing it down slowing the pace down let's see if anything happened after the pitch maybe he landed funny he says no I'm all right I'm rolling now skip he's retired five in a row No charge visit to the mound. Rivera walked left stranded in the first inning. Good fastball there. He swings right through it. Let's take a look here. Let's see in the right leg, see if anything happens here when he lands. Yeah, he little twinge right there, and they saw it and came right out. But that last pitch he threw was nice, free, and easy. You saw Horvath and Singer as freshmen. Yeah. How does Leftwich compare at the same stage? Well, he's he's right there. Because th they broke Brady Singer in nice and slow. Leftwich actually may be given more of a position to get in that rotation in the SEC than Brady did early on. Remember, you had 
A.J. Puck in there, Logan Shore, and Alex Fiedo. That's who Singer was battling against. Those three pitchers I just named, all first-rounders. The, the beat goes on. I mean, right. Kevin O'Sullivan takes these pitchers in here. Next thing you know, they're going in the first round. He's done an amazing job. That's why they come here. And Kevin O'Sullivan, the head coach, also serves as the pitching coach. Yep. And uh, that can't be easy. You really have to rely on your staff, I would think, for a lot of the other things that right. you know, he's not going to miss much. But they can just put different things in his in his head every once in a while. Well, he's ultra talented, and to do those things is amazing. When I was managing the minor leagues, I had a great pitching coach in, in Mark Brewer, who was uh, now in the Rockies organization, and I, I let the pitch in. I said, Mark, those those guys are yours. You know, he's he's doing both. Kevin O'Sullivan, one of four coaches in SEC history to claim five or more league titles. SEC Coach of the Year for the third time in 2018. Strikeout number five for Mr. Leftwich. Leftwich is rocking now, painting the corner once again. And the young man is showing his tenacity, was on the ropes early. And I'm saying, you got to get to this guy, get to the bullpen, something, because you know that Florida offense is eventually going to come to life. Has retired six in a row, four of those strikeout victims. Deal strike one to Gunnar Lambert, who knocked in FAU's two runs with a single in the first inning. Well, if he had butterflies in the first, they're gone. Whatever nerves Leftwich might have been feeling, he is really settling into a nice rhythm. Working with the bases empty and two outs in the top of the third inning. Lard Atlantic winning game six, seven, four, sending this one to a decisive seventh game. Four of them around the nation. This should do it. Smith coming down from first base. India coming over, sliding. And as he went to the ground, I think the ball in and out of his glove. That's a long way for the third baseman to come. That's a catcher first base scenario right there. And it just didn't get together on it. I think Jonathan just came over because he saw the indecision. Off the end of the glove. Never actually had it in. Yeah, Brady Smith pounded his chest saying, my bad, I should have called him off. He said, what are you doing all the way over here? At bat extended for Gunnar Lambert. Leftwich takes care of business. Strikes out two in the inning. Owl still up 2-0 as the Gators come to the plate in the bottom of the third. Lard and Lennox, the story for the Owls, scoring in the first inning. Gunnar Lambert, two-run single against Jack Leftwich in the first inning. Leftwich, you could say he was on the ropes, but he rebounded, Nick. Yeah, they had the bullpen going. It was hitter by hitter at one point, and he just turned it loose, especially after the Jonathan India error. You think, uh-oh, he may serve one up here. He was at pitch 41-42 at that point, and he just turned it on. That's special stuff, what we're seeing after being on the ropes in the first inning. Gators need to get the bats going, down 2 nothing. Duran, Lippitt, Maldonado, 9-1-2, do up. Jonah Duran, first year with the Gators. J.J. Schwartz, big injury. They hope to have him back for the Super Regional. At this point now, we can say if they get to the Super Regional, because this is a decisive game seven, one of four with the start of regional play on Friday, wrapping up on Monday. And Duran has two home runs. And we can talk about the offense. Yeah. We've touched on it. Yep. That's the gravy. What he's done, he's done a solid job. He's now catching back end of a doubleheader, is what we can call it, two games today. And four games since Friday. Remember, he started just one game. That was in the SEC tournament. Yeah, and his receiving has been spot on. And we've seen him throwing out runners, too. Only his fifth start. That's the thing you got to take in consideration. 
Four of those since Friday. Yeah, right? There you go. Had the third of three solo home runs in the 3-2 victory against the Jacksonville Dolphins on Saturday. Three of the top seven national seeds have failed to advance past the regionals this year, including number two Stanford. FAU try to add the Gators to that list. And this has been amazing. John McCormick, his strategy has been spot on. And he threw Nick Swan out there, not sure what he was going to get. But I guarantee he's very happy throwing the lefty out there who hasn't started a game all year. You said second inning, they started to make a little better contact. Horvath was retired on a fine play. They got the force out at second. And Tyler Frank at shortstop helped him out not once but twice in the inning. A leadoff walk to Duran. That's how we get things going in the bottom of the third inning. We'll have game two for you Tuesday, and if necessary, game three Wednesday in the best of three Women's College World Series championship final between Washington and Florida State. Tuesday's game is at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central start, with Wednesday's if necessary game, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app, Florida State. Up a game, winning the first game 1-0. Or up one in the series, we'll say. And um, Florida softball team, center field, off the bat of Lippitt. He's retired for the second time tonight on a fly-up. Nice recovery by Swan after walking the leadoff hitter, the Florida Gators softball team. They were down the right field line, sort of their meetings as they got back home to Gainesville. That was a big out. Top of the order and getting him on one pitch out in front. And after the the walk to the nine hole hitter, John McCormick got the bullpen up. Mark Nowotnik, four scoreless in a start in the regional. And he is throwing and getting ready. Nowotnik earned the win Saturday in an 11 2 victory against Columbia. Florida Atlantic, the number three seed. Last night they knocked off the two seed, Jacksonville, after losing to the Dolphins on Friday night here at McKeithen. Owls came into the regional at the end of the season and the conference postseason tournament, 33rd nationally in RPI. Conference USA Tournament in Biloxi, Mississippi, May 25th and May 26th. They played four games in two days. They beat Rice. Later in the semi and later in the same day, semifinals of the Conference USA Tournament. They beat Rice 9, 8, and 10 innings. innings. The game did not uh, end until 2 a.m. Next day, they lost in the championship against Southern Miss. Maldonado with one on and one down. Nelson Maldonado, he's another guy. He's got sneaky power to all fields. You make a mistake, he'll turn on a pitch or he'll go with it. And he will give you extended at-bats. He's done it all regional. Fair ball down the left field line. This one will go towards the corner. Durand a third. He's stopped there by Craig Bell, second and third for the Gators. Always a tough out. He's going to get a pitch, keep his hands back. It hangs, a slider, and beats it down the line. And now he's down there representing the potential tie run. Maldonado did not have a base hit in the first two victories. Two base hits, a double and an RBI base hit earlier tonight, and a 7-4 loss. 
The table is set for India and Dalton. Yeah, here comes trouble, and how are they going to pitch him? And they do not have to challenge here. You got a base open. If you walk him, sets up a double play. They're making sure they're on the same page. John McCormick may see enough and go right on right here. He got all he can, 45 pitches out of a guy who hasn't started all year and is only 24 innings to his credit on the season. He's making the move, but I guarantee he's happy with Nick Swan and what he has accomplished tonight. Swan hands over the baseball. Mark Nowotnik is going to come on from the bullpen for FAU. India at the plate when we come back representing the go-ahead run for the Gators. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. FAU up 2 nothing, scoring two in the first inning. And Mr. Swan gives way to Mr. Nowotnik who is on and he enters with runners at second and third. And that's his line from the other night, but what makes it interesting here. He's a guy that throws 92, 93 miles an hour. Gators have not seen that all night long from any of the Florida Atlantic pitchers in game one or in this game. How do they adjust to the guy throwing hard? He's one of those guys that comes at you, ultra competitive. Let's see how he handles the situation. Again, he's got a base open. He really doesn't have to challenge India here. Four scoreless against Columbia. Fourth win on the season. His other victories against North Florida on the road at Miami and against Charlotte. Abraham summoned to the mound by Nowotnik. Fans here at McKeithen Stadium, they're waiting to erupt. They're like a powder keg ready to go. First game was frustrating. Many here since noon. And tying on India. What did Nuke Lelouch say? Announce your presence with authority? That was 93 up and in. India home run here in the regional 18 on the season. Here's India's home run against Jacksonville Saturday night broke a scoreless tie. That's what we call a no doubter. Yeah, and his buddy Will Dalton followed with a back to backer. They'll take a base hit right now, I guarantee you. So what's the adjustment now? Soft, 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 and now Nowotnik can get it up there 90 plus. Well, they've got him out in front. Now John McCormick is hoping that they're going to be slow now and their bats will be behind because they face slow stuff this afternoon, early evening, and tonight. Two ball, two strike count on Jonathan India. Earlier tonight, drafted fifth overall in the first round of the Major League Baseball draft by the Cincinnati Reds organization. And I, I don't expect them to challenge him here with a fastball. I'm looking slider in the dirt, see if he chases after it and it becomes over anxious. Base hit left field. India RBI base hit, Craig Bell putting up the stop sign for Maldonado. Gators on the board and looking for more. Wow, they decided to challenge Jonathan India, the SEC Player of the Year, with a fastball. They didn't bury anything in the dirt, and he made them pay. This is straight, and he's on it. I mean, that's a guy that if you're going to challenge him, you better go upstairs over the hands. That's right down there in the hitter zone, up in the count 2-2. Two -two. Wow. Four RBIs in the regional for India. Maldonado now at third representing the tying run. He gets a hole this one right here. This place will go crazy. Dalton had a single in the second against Swan facing Nowotnik. Lead off walk comes back to haunt FAU. Crossed him up. And that's dangerous now because you got a runner at third base. You better be on the same page. 
really no excuse for that because you're not mixing up your signals with a runner at second base. And that's twice now they've had a conversation. Gators in their 7-4 loss in game six, which forced this decisive game seven. Just one for 12 with runners in scoring position. They had their opportunities. Now what we saw last at bat, Will Dalton took a pitch, albeit from the lefty, but went to the right side. He kept his hands back. Let's see if he stays with that same approach. If he hangs him on, he's going to pull it out of here. Two home runs in the regional so far. Upstairs. Have a feeling the bullpen's going to be busy the rest of the night. Well, think about this. The guy coming in throwing 90 plus, he, he's on the ropes early. And George. this is what John McCormick was talking about when he said, I'm going to go with soft tossing pitchers tonight. Left-hander Jordan Poor throwing. Dalton showing the patience. Three ball, no strike count. And I say that because he's starting to see more fastballs, more than he's seen really all night long. India at first, Maldonado at third, and now the bases are loaded. Dalton on base for the second time. And here's Austin Langworthy. And I think Mac has seen enough. John McCormack has already made the call. Now Watnick facing two batters and two very dangerous hitters. India RBI base hit, Dalton a walk. A 2-1 ball game here in the third. India RBI base hit. And the Gators batting here in the third, looking for a whole lot more. 2-1 ball game, Gators on the board here in the third. Feel the chump. They're trying to chop and punch their way to the Super Regional round. This is the last regional remaining. 15 teams are making their plans for next weekend. Travel plans, rotation plans, lineup plans, Tennessee Tech, Duke. Five schools on their way to the Super Regional for the first time in school history. Cal State Fullerton knocking off number two national seed Stanford in Palo Alto on Sunday night. Really take a look at that list and there's a lot to digest. North Carolina moving on. Jordan Poor out of the bullpen. He enters with the bases loaded, one out, and Austin Langworthy standing in. Yeah, he's got a left to left matchup. He's 83 to 85 with a slider. So again, a guy with a little softer in the velocity. That guy stepping in right now, Austin Langworthy, big three run home run a year ago against Bethune Cookman that took the Gators to the Super Regional. Langworthy robbed of a home run in the regional over the weekend. A strike and it's 0 and 1. As a hitter now, you're looking for something you can elevate. Fly ball ties this ball game. One ball, one strike count on Austin Langworthy. And he's had two looks at him now, and he's probably making an adjustment. He goes slider. He's going to try to go left side with it. Or was the pitcher on the mound when Jacksonville was rallying in the seventh inning. At the start of the delay, he did not come back out after Peden came on and finished up for FAU. He got two outs, but uh, he was very much on the ropes. Now he's on the ropes now, and, is for, and it's not his doing, but the game's in his hands right now. Center field, shallow. Cody Wilson coming in, makes a catch. Maldonado is held at third as the throw comes to the pitcher's mound. Poor gets the first batter that he faces. That's a huge second out. Maldonado was coming down the line. Craig Bell put up the stop sign. Well, when you make the decision right here, if you're a third base coach, 
you can't make it based on where it ends up. You got to make the decision based on where you think it's going to go. Now, it looks like that was not the greatest throw. It was going to be offline. But when you tell the guy to hold up as a third base coach, you're telling him before that ball is let go or just when it's out of the hands. You don't have time to realize it's going to be to the right of the mound. Blake Reese batting from the right side, switch hitter. But how big an out was that? No advancement. Line shot off the pitcher, poor to first inning over. That one was destined for center field, and poor using the glove and leaving the bases loaded. Gators snake bitten here in the third, but they do get a run. On the RBI single, they end up stranding three. We're going to the fourth. Poor, his own best friend. Now they needed that right now. The kid comes in, does a job. They're fired up in that FAU dugout. They've got a one run lead. They're feeling. Owls up 2 1 as we go to the fourth inning. Owls head coach John McCormack joins us now from the first base dugout. Mac, you've been very successful all day and now into this ball game with guys that are throwing. You know, let's just say the soft tossers and poor comes in here now. I can ask you a question. Is Peden available in this game? Yes, Peden and Schneider both uh, wow. told me That's, they were available. There you go. Um, so we'll just continue to do what we do. Um, you're going to have to try to keep these guys off balance. It's a really talented team. we got to keep them off balance. When does the John McCormack we score in the first inning video come out? Uh, we're working on it behind the scenes right now as we speak. That's going to be a money maker. Thank you, Coach. Okay. He's got a Thank bottle you. of that, man. That's good stuff. How, how to take an early lead in a regional. Jordan Poor leaving three runners on base in the third inning. A one-run ball game. Well, that tells you all you need to know. I mean, he, he's going to go with his closer. We started the first game and went, what, five innings? And then Drew Peden, who was on fire, uh, pitching great in the first game. Jack Leftwich on for his fourth inning. He's retired seven straight. Walk three, struck out three in the first. Now six strikeouts total. Two strike pitch to Montez. He stays alive. We have had, uh, I will call it the privilege. We, I, for the first time, met John McCormack on Thursday. Yep. Very gracious uh, with his time and as honest a coach I've ever dealt with. I mean, who's going to who's going to tell you that he's got two guys available? Montez to left field. Langworthy puts it away. Eight in a row set aside by Leftwich. Well, a special Thursday night baseball matchup for you on ESPN at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, Central, when the Tigers take on the Red Sox in the final game of their three game series. You can always watch this one on the ESPN app from anywhere. Nick Castellanos leading the Tigers. J.D. Martinez, former Tiger, leading the AL home runs, runs batted in. First year with the Red Sox. One down base is empty. Jared DeSantolo at the plate. But, uh, well, we might have him available. Wishy-washy, no. They told me that they can go. Now, how long they're available for remains to be seen. But John McCormack yep. just hasn't held back with us. Well, I'm thinking at least two innings each, which means can they get through the fifth? Well, Leftwich given a run in the third. In terms of the support, Gators were looking for a whole lot more. De Santillo aboard with a one out walk. And you know Kevin O'Sullivan right now, 83 is a pitch count. He's going to look at him. Batter to batter. Richie needs a 0 for 1. Struck out looking in the first inning. He's got Jordan Butler, I'm sure, available. Tommy Mace, but Michael Byrne, you know he's going to go multiple innings. You just don't know how many. Foul ball at home plate. That got the catcher, Duran. That's Tommy Mace. He started game one Friday against Columbia. 
I think they've taken that garage door and lowered it so we can't peek in there and get a true view. Our director, Mike Griffin, he knows the players just from the knees down. That's how we know. And there's Jordan Butler, the lefty, so. Well, there we can see the number 15, but uh, point taken, right? Two strike count on Richie Nietzsche. If you're FAU, this is the inning where you want to get a couple of more runs. We've touched on the trend with the 13 first inning runs and against Jacksonville in the elimination game, they got things going. In the first inning, they scored five in the first, five in the second. In game six earlier tonight, they waited to erupt until the third when they pushed five runs across. But uh, from the fifth inning on, feast early, famine the rest of the way, and that's been the trend for the Owls. Yeah, it'll make you scratch your head. You're trying to figure out how to get tack on runs anyway, anyhow, and he may start runners up here soon. Nietzsche out on strikes for the second time. He's now struck out seven. Let's take a look. This is the pitch prior to the strikeout for Leftwich. Yeah, you could see he just felt a little something, a little, I don't know if that's a cramp. You know, it's a day where you can't get cramps. He felt a little something in the calf. Athletic trainer and Kevin O'Sullivan came out earlier. Seven strikeouts for Jack Leftwich, tying a career high. He recovered pretty quickly, though, didn't he? He did that time. <laughs> but uh, that doesn't get easier to work with. And you can see what he's doing. He's actually bending his knee after pitches, so he's feeling something in there. They came out immediately the first time. Left which for the fourth time this year, striking out seven in an outing and for the third straight. At seven strikeouts against LSU and a 5 4 losses last time out. Good location there ahead, one and two. He's just been terrific since the first inning. And that ultra competitive mentality we talked about from Lethwich, you're seeing it on display. He struck out Abraham looking in the second. I had the ball in two strikes with two down. Winner advances to the Super Regional. Winner of this one will face Auburn next weekend. There's a look, Auburn coming out of the Raleigh Regional. Number 16 national seed, North Carolina State could not hold serve at home. Called strike three, inning over. Jack Leftwich now with a career high eight strikeouts. His head coach, Kevin O'Sullivan, is going to join us in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Two more strikeouts for Leftwich. FAU strands a runner. They still lead two to one. One run ball game as we go to the last half of the fourth inning. Kevin O'Sullivan, SEC Coach of the Year for the Gators, joins us now from the dugout on the third base side. Boy, Sully, Leftwich has really turned it on lately. Will he go back out in the fifth? And how many innings could uh, Michael Byrne give you tonight? Uh, the answer to your first question, no, he's not going back out. He's at 94, and right. it's awfully humid out here. And, um, Michael Byrne, he could probably give us three and some change. Yep. So we just got to piece it together and hopefully you know, score some runs and hand it over to Michael. Coach, Jonah Duran has started every game in the regional behind the plate. What's impressed you the most with how he's handled your pitching staff? 
you know, he, I thought he made a really good throw there on, on the hit and run there in the first. And, um, you know, he's caught, you know, the ball very well. He's kept the ball in front of him when it's been in the dirt. And he's done an awfully nice job. Kevin, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Smith, Horvath, Duran, 7-8-9 due up. Jordan Poor left the bases loaded. Got two outs, two huge outs in the third inning in relief of Mark Nowotnik. Poor is on for the bottom of the fourth inning. Game seven, Gainesville Regional. Florida in 2017 en route to the first national title in school history. Went a full seven in the regional here at home and won game seven against Bethune-Cookman. Then they were pushed to the brink in the super regional round. Smith walked in his first plate appearance. Singles in the center field, tying run aboard here in the fourth inning for the Gators. What I think I've learned and appreciate about Kevin Sullivan the most as we take a look at Smith here. Fastball, straight challenge, and he's on it. He's sitting on this pitch. And look, the last guy that faced him hit a line drive right back at him. So that's two line drives right back at the pitcher, and I guarantee you John McCormick has made a note of that. Nick Horvath, 0 for 1. A strike. Well, we've talked about Jonathan India, Brady Singer, Jackson Kowar, all first round picks in the first round of the Major League Baseball draft. That young man has been drafted 56 overall. Tyler Frank drafted by the Tampa Bay Rays organization. Base hit through the left side. Throw into third base. Out at third is Brady Smith. Smith is slow to get up. He does what you do not want to do. He makes the first out of an inning at third base. He hit that back funny when he slid. And that's a big break for FAU from the standpoint of instead of first and second, nobody out. They're looking at that left hand. You see the mitt on the right hand. On the right hand, yep. And those fingers are shaking a bit. Now they're going to take them off and evaluate. That's a big out. Base hit left side, play in front of Smith. And it was recognized right away by Rivera. The throw is there. Montez on the bag, applying the tag. And like you said, if it's bang, bang with nobody out, then it's not worth going. Yeah, watch the left hand, and you can see it's jammed. Jonah Duran walked and scored in the last inning. Watch the left hand right there. But think about it. That's three hard hit balls in a row. Now Rivera, the left fielder, was playing deep. Kevin O'Sullivan going down to the middle of the dugout, far end, and now back at the near end of the dugout. Yeah, but just risky because the fact that the play is in front of you and the situation dictates if you're getting the third base, you better be going in there fairly easy with nobody out. Time called for at home plate. Tyler Frank again going 56th overall to the Tampa Bay Rays. What a story would this be if Jonah Jaranga can get a hold of one here. Two home runs in the regional. First start came in the SEC tournament. He has started all four games for the Gators behind the plate here in the regional. First year in the program. Horvath, the runner at first base. 
Horvath and Duran were teammates at Santa Fe College before both ended up here in Gainesville. Scott Carter on FloridaGators.com had a great story on Duran over the last couple of days. Swings and drives it in the air to deep left field. That ball is out of here. What a story it'd be if he could hit one out of here, and he just does. Pitches up, he's all over it. Third home run in a regional in only his fifth start of the season. And this is Mammoth. Wow. In 1985, the University of Miami had a kid named Greg Elena. Wasn't playing much during the year. Got a chance late in the year for Ron Fraser. Just went off in the College World Series and became the MVP of the College World Series. This is shades of Greg Elena. Three home runs, five runs batted in for Jonah Durant. Gators' first lead. Lip it 0 for 2. Shortstop, Frank makes the call, makes the catch. Yeah, look at that comparison. 53 home runs. That won you the College World Series. How about this? There's 62 games, and that's what put all the fear in everybody and said, this Florida team, look, they're better than last year. Power standpoint, absolutely. Six home runs here at McKeithen Stadium during the regional. This is... The fourth game for the Gators. Opened up 2-0, lost earlier tonight in game six against the Owls. Maldonado doubled in the third inning. He was left stranded at third base. Duran, three career home runs for the Gators in 2018. They're, they've all come over the last four days. Can you get him in the lineup? Now, Maldonado has been the DH. J.J. Schwartz returns. If you advance to the Super Regional round, can you get your ends bat in the lineup somehow? Or do you possibly use Schwartz as the, in the DH role? All kind of possibilities that they're going to give you. That's one another bat that has emerged in your lineup that Kevin O'Sullivan was not counting on most of the year. Good problem. <laughs> Maldonado skies one in the air. Needs of the second baseman waiting. Side retired. Poor rebounds from the Keithan Stadium in Gainesville, Florida. You're watching the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Gators first lead on this Monday. Jonah Duran continues to write his own story. Duran behind the plate. Freddie Smith is out of the game. Ice on his left hand, injured, sliding into third base on a single to left field by Nick Horvath. So new first baseman, Keenan Bell, and Bell will bat in the number seven spot in the lineup. Tommy Mace out of the bullpen. Kevin O'Sullivan told us, left which was done. He struck out a career high over four. Well, he's looking for a bridge, and if it's gonna be Mace and Jordan Butler to get him to burn, we'll see. But in his 23rd appearance, he got himself in the SEC rotation and was actually one of the best pitchers the Gators had going coming into this regional. It hit a bump in the road on Friday night, but right back in there, 96 miles an hour in the fastball slider changeup. Another guy, up-tempo delivery, comes right at you. Went two-plus innings Friday against Columbia. 
And the Gators were down. 3-1. They scored a run to pull to within a run in the third, then scored six hit runs in the fourth inning, added on five late. All these Gator pitchers through the years, they kind of, that first year to get their feet wet. Well, Lethwich and Mace, they look like they're going to be rotation guys in the future for sure, the way they look this year. Tyler Frank mentioned. Frank drafted 56th overall. We were told and chronicling Frank anywhere from 50 to 70, and he was right in there at 56, selected by the Rays organization. India near the bag at third. Bell keeps the bag. Frank retired, one away. This is the biggest shutdown point of the year for the Gators. Just took the lead in a winner-take-all game in the regional. How important would it be for him to throw a zero up here? Mace from the Tampa area. 12th round draft choice by the Reds in 2017. Out of the high school ranks, part of a very good, in fact, the second best recruiting class for 2018 in the entire nation, that according to Baseball America. Up the middle, Lippitt showing the range. And Wilson, a one out base runner. And that's a speedy Wilson, and you know he may take off if he gets his pitch here. Let's see how John McCormick plays it. This is a tough play, all the way up the middle, speedy runner, 6'4 runner in the 60. So Lippitt really had to get rid of it quickly. Base hit all the way. You got a guy that runs that well. All that momentum going off towards right field. Nothing Lippitt really could do. Luckily, that bell kept it from going into the dugout. David Miranda 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. Tenth base hit of the regional for Cody Wilson. And Wilson has gotten some good jumps in this regional, stealing bases. Opposite way, slicing foul. As a base stealer, you want to key in on the left shoulder of that right-handed pitcher. That's what you're doing when you have your lead out there. So when he gets his lead, look at that. As soon as he makes a move with that left shoulder going home, that's when you take off. He has 18 stolen bases on the season, three in the regional, and four tries. You got a dangerous hitter here in Miranda, so you got to make sure you make a pitch here 0 2. David Miranda's that kid that keeps everybody loose. He's from California. John McCormick said, hey, kind of a kooky lefty guy, comes to the ballpark and a skateboard, keeps us loose, but he's a darn good baseball player. Toss over to first base. One, two is usually a good pitch to go on because it's a breaking ball count. Advantage base stealer when a pitcher throws a, a breaking ball. Slower delivery time to home plate. Duke Blue Devils today knocking off Georgia not once but twice. 8-5 and 8-4 victories to advance to the Super Regional Round for the first time in school history. Georgia had a great year, 39 wins overall. See, that would have been a good pitch to go right there. Breaking ball in the dirt. That would have been tough for Jonah Duran to come up and make a throw. Stays two and two. Chris Crabtree from Duke was named as the most outstanding player for the Athens Regional. Griffin Conine, Zach Cohn, Chris Proctor, Mitch Stallings were also named to the All Athens Regional Tournament team. FAU trying to mimic Duke and Mississippi State. Ground ball with eyes through the left side. Two on with one down. 
Miranda now has hit safely in 12 in a row. That was the kind of base hit that we saw often for FAU in the first game. They owned that side of the field in the first inning. It wasn't even funny. It was hit after hit was going through the left side. But now, look, Mace is a bridge. You saw Butler out there. He's another one that's a bridge. They need these guys to come through to bring Michael Byrne in the game, possibly with the lead or tied, because you know Kevin O'Sullivan said they're going to stretch him out. And you'll see Byrne probably in this game, maybe the seventh inning. Eric Rivera, 0 for 1. He has struck out and walked. Check swing, look out. That one into the first base dugout. Tampa Bay Rays stayed in state. They selected Shane McClanahan, 31st overall out of South Florida. And with a 56 pick, we told you they took FAU shortstop Tyler Frank. Jonathan India taken fifth overall by the Cincinnati Reds organization. His teammates, Jackson Kowar and Brady Singer, they could very well be teammates at the pro level, both selected by the Kansas City Royals tonight. Singer was selected 18th overall by Kansas City. And Kowar was selected with a 33rd overall pick. That slider backed up on him. When you see that happen, those pitches are not intentional. A backup slider is a ball that actually is supposed to be going away but works in. Hitters are usually frozen by that pitch, and that's what happened. Wilson, terrific speed. He is a tying run at second base. Miranda at first with one down. Called strike three. First strikeout for Mace. That was the best pitch that he's thrown all night, and it came at a crucial time in this ball game. Starts out at the thigh level, drops down to the knees, freezes the hitter. Great job by Duran on, on the frame, too. Mace will now face Gunnar Lambert. Lambert knocked in the two FAU runs with a single back in the first inning against Jack Leftwich. Leftwich faced eight batters in the first inning. Freshman got the ball to start tonight in a decisive game seven. It wasn't looking all that good for Leftwich in the first inning, but he responded, struck out Montez. DeSantolo reached out an error to load the bases. Then he struck out Nietzsche looking. And then he went on to retire eight straight batters. Four innings total. Got to be careful here. Behind 3-0 and on Lambert. Montez, who has been right there in terms of production on deck. Does John McCormick green light him here? I would not be surprised. Three zero is over. Ooh. That was a good one to take a hack at. Take the handcuffs off here. First base, Bell. Feeds Mace, inning over. FAU threatening here in the fifth. They fell to score, stranding two. We've gone halfway, middle of the fifth inning at McKeithen Stadium. Gators up a run. Let's take a look at a Capital One rewarding performance. Jonah Duran, fifth start, third home run in a regional. Gives the Gators the lead out into the night. That is the Capital One. Rewarding performance.
Home run against Jordan Poor. He's done after an inning and two thirds. There is Jonah Duran. I think he needs a water balloon. <laughs> Someone can bring that man cold drink of water. New pitcher in the ball game, Vince Coletti making his first appearance of the regional for John McCormack and the Owls. Yeah, and this is a guy with 15 starts on the season out of Hollywood, Cal Hollywood, Florida, and he's a hard throwing guy, 90, 92 miles an hour. See the numbers on here. See, that's 78 innings. The guy who started tonight only had 24. But a different style of pitching. John McCormick went with a soft tossing guy, mid 80s guy by today's standards. And now he's going with a 90 plus guy. Let's see how it turns out. SEC Player of the Year, Jonathan India. Selected fifth overall tonight by the Cincinnati Reds in the opening night of what is three straight days of the Major League Baseball draft. John McCormick would love to see Coletti give him two innings here. India RBI base hit. Cut it to a 2-1 deficit in the third inning. India might be hunting slider here. Selected fifth overall by the Reds. Rio is over. Now let's see what John McCormick calls here. Does he go fastball or slider to the dangerous Indian? Swing and a drive. Deep left field and gone. Gator fans watching this are loving it. Cincinnati Reds fans apparently watching tonight are loving it. We selected India from Florida. Is he on TV tonight? Yes, he is, and he delivers in a big way. That pitch left up, and he hammers it. Decided to challenge, he made him pay. I'm wondering which home run that he's hit here in the regional went further. What a great problem. <laughs> Figure that one out. Just give me the balloon, the water balloon. I know the launch angle was there. Exit below everything, right? All the new stuff. Here's Dalton. Now, Indy and Dalton went back to back on Saturday night. Let's see how Coletti responds. Fires a strike going one on Will Dalton. You can see 91 miles an hour and these Gator hitters, they can turn that around in a hurry. Two strikes on Dalton. Well, after he gave up the home run, David Kopp went out there. Message, I think, received. That's the Dutch uncle speech right there. I mean, it's key that Coletti can bridge his ball club to get Peden back in there and possibly Schneider. But they can't afford to fall behind in a big way here. And they know who's lurking out in the bullpen for the Gators. They know Michael Burns out there, and he may go and come in this game in the seventh inning. So you cannot give the Gators a two, three run lead. That's Michael Byrne, that's like having an eight run lead. Byrne picked up a save and a one run victory against Jacksonville on Saturday night. And uh, he gave up a leadoff triple in the eighth inning yep. and left that runner at third, then worked a one, two, three, ninth inning. Still waiting. Yeah, he's got one more inning probably to hang out and work his way down there. Right now, just casual conversation. Dalton 
to left. Home run, Will Dalton. For the second time in the Gainesville Regional, India and Dalton back to back. And India, one of the first to greet him. Well, the fans wanted it. It's a long-standing run back by popular demand, back-to-back -back home runs, and that is a hanger. He's just wondering if it was topspin enough to get out. Watch this ball. It's hooking. Rivera thinks it came back in play, but it did get over the scoreboard. Wow, these guys are electric. Ten home runs in the regional. Three for Dalton. Three for catcher Jonah Duran. Two for India. Think about this offense. If they are able to hang on and win this game and possibly bring a guy like J.J. Schwartz back for a super, that's just another power bat. I noticed that Craig Bell did the, he did the backhand slap. It's, it's better. It's less injury that your, your guy gives you. <laughs> Coletti comes back to strike out Langworthy after giving up the back-to-back -back home runs. Well, for the second time, in this regional, India has taken the team lead in home runs, but the lead short-lived. He shares it once again. India with 19, Dalton with 19. Teammates have had each other's back. The only time I have not seen Jonathan India smiling when he was told last night that they weren't going to play game six. Yeah, exactly. Blake Reese has one of the 10 home runs. In the regional. Was it Reese? I know Langworthy was robbed of a home run. Reese as well, right? Correct. When, and w which one was a potential grand slam? I think. Look up a box score here. And on the hands, Montez over to take a look. Montez on the warning track. Reset the plate out a two out two run home run in game six. And a Florida 7 4 setback, which forced this decisive game seven. Only regional without a conclusion. Florida down 2 0. A run in the third. Two in the fourth on a two run shot by Jonah Duran. India and Dalton solo shots to open up the fifth. Well, Coletti kind of talking to and really a scolding after India's home run. He was then ahead two strikes on Dalton. He just hung one. Supposed to bury a slider and it just left it way up. night big home run he's got a chance to win a regional and he got drafted fifth overall Reese with a walk and a one-out base runner it's good to be him the Warriors lead the series two games to none and we'll have game three of the NBA finals for you Wednesday on ABC our coverage starts with 
The NBA Countdown at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. Vince Coletti facing four batters, and he will exit to the first base dugout. John McCormack going back to the bullpen. Florida now up 5-2 in the fifth inning, trying to advance to a Super Regional for the tenth time in school history. Steve Lennox, former Gator. Nick Belmonte. Nick still holds the school record for stolen bases in a single season, 42 back in 1976. You wouldn't have been running as much with this power in the no, lineup. No, I would not. Just nope. sit back and watch him knock it out of the ballpark. Weston Clemente is now on. Fifth pitcher used by John McCormack and the Owls. Well, we saw him in the earlier game, comes in to basically get out lefties. Doesn't throw that hard and tries to keep you off balance. Let's we'll see how it goes. But they, they're in big need of shutting this down. Keenan Bell first at bat. Brady Smith had a leadoff single in the fourth inning. Trying to go first and third on a base hit to left field by Nick Horvath. Was cut down for the first down of the inning. Also injured his left hand. We saw him in the dugout with ice on the left hand. 5-2 Florida. John McCormick talking about West Clement. He says, not that hard. Middle, mid-80s guy, but the kid's got guts. He goes after you. His numbers aren't great right now, but lately he's been pitching okay. That's why they're riding him. Mainly left-on-left -left guy during the season. What you're looking at from a lefty, if you're Blake Reese over there, you're looking at his glove, try to see if he says anything different or tips it off anything different when he's going home and when he's coming to first. Sometimes when they go to first, they'll wrap that glove around behind them. If they're going home, they'll just bounce it. So he wraps it around. That's it. You see that, and then you go back. Going home, there's a good chance what he's going to do. He's just going to bounce it up and down and then go home with momentum going forward. But to get a throw back to first, he's going to wrap his body around with that glove. That's a key that you could use against left-handed pitchers. Bell could not lay off. Clemente retires the first batter that he faces. And Nick Horvath will stand in, one for two. Breaking ball, just watch his eyes get big right there. He sees a pitch slow and up, and he just goes after it. Nick Horvath, a single in the fourth. Scored ahead of Duran on his two-run home run. That put the Gators in front. Runner goes upstairs, throw down to second base by... Abraham, it goes into center field, and Reese is going to stay put. Yeah, please. Reese had him measured right there. He saw him going home real quick and just took off. That's a big jump, and really nothing Abraham could do. And that's what happened when you rush a throw. This is a big jump. So he reads the, the glove going up. He takes off. Good jump. And then when a catcher sees a guy with a big jump like that, they'll rush a throw. A lot of times they'll end up center field like that. Abraham keeps that one at home plate. And we've seen Horvath on pitches, maybe a, trying to get a back foot slider. And if you hang one to him down and in, he'll pull one out of here too. Six homers on the year. Oh, 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 oh. 
two shot foul. Fifth inning, game seven, Gainesville Regional, game six completed earlier. Game six was originally slated to start at 1 o'clock Eastern. Not underway after 5 p.m. here at McKeithen Stadium. Horvath continues to battle. Got to get that pitch down. Most of the fans have been here since noon. So for you and me and everyone else, 12 hours. They made the announcement that the game was going to be delayed at the start during the 12 o'clock hour. To right field, Miranda puts it away, inning over. Florida denting the scoreboard and adding on to a lead here in the fifth inning, the big bats in the middle. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Steve Lennox, Nick Belmonte, glad you're with us on this, well, Monday night turning into Tuesday morning. The fans here at McKeithen Stadium, they're going to stay put until the final out. Why not? They've been here and waited out some lengthy delays over the last, well, almost 36, 40 hours. 5-2 ball game, Nick. Florida with the lead. Nick and I have those back at our hotel rooms. We'll be sporting those on the way home tomorrow. India at third, one down. That's huge. You throw up a two spot, you need a shutdown inning and one pitch, one out. Tommy Mace. First inning in relief of Je uh, Jack Leftwich, gave up two hits and had first and second, struck out Rivera. Got Lambert on the ground out to first. Jared DeSantolo at the plate. Well, 2017, the eight teams in Omaha for the College World Series won by the Gators. Texas A&M ousted. TCU did not make the field this year. They had made it to Omaha each of the previous four years. They beat Missouri State in the Fort Worth Super Regional last year to make it for a fourth straight year. Cal State Fullerton, Oregon State. The two teams from last year's Omaha field advanced to the Super Regionals. We've been talking about them, and now he's up and throwing. They call it feel the burn. You have a, I'll call it a terrific relationship with Michael's mom. <laughs> well, the whole family, they're, they're great people, and they, they love their son, and they got the feel the burn shirts. Little flare left field. And Langworthy will have to play it on a hop. One out base runner. 5 2 ball game here in the sixth inning. 1 a.m. Sports Center. Steve Levy, Harry Melrose from D.C., Stanley Cup final, game four, NBA finals. How can the Cavs get back in the series and beat the Warriors? Plus, top moments from Monday. Sports Center, 1 a.m. Eastern. Richie Nietzsche has struck out twice. Bouncing ball, lip at the second. One, Reese back to first. And Bell, ball in and out of his glove. He'll track it down on the slick dirt. They got the lead runner. And believe it or not, that's the most important thing. Make sure you get one in this situation. Absolutely, you don't want to get too fancy. Just get the one. Can't presuppose a double play, therefore, you can't charge an error here on that throw. Bell does a nice job. Keeps it in front, too, so still got the force on. Great stretch. Two down. Kevin Abraham has struck out in his first two at bats. And needs a. Abraham, 8 9. Combining so far. For 0 for 5. It's not just Wilson, Miranda. Rivera got off to a slow start before he picked up his bat late in the weekend. The bottom of the lineup for FAU has produced an awful lot as well. Oh. 
Went too far. Ran behind the play catching. Gunnar Lambert caught game six earlier tonight at first base and knocking in the Owls runs back in the first inning. Duran keeps that one at home plate. Think about this. Duran has caught every inning today for the Florida Gators. Every inning of the regional. Every inning of the regional. He's out there again just battling, keeping balls in front. He's been spectacular back there. What a what a region. Strikes him out. Throw down to first base. Ball almost thrown away. Bell showing the acrobatics. Mace, a second straight scoreless Sydney. 5-2 Gators as we go to the last of the sixth. I think that's our first image reading that promo where fans in the stands don't actually have their phones in their hands. I might be mistaken, but I don't think I'm off by that much. Well, if they've been over yeah. here for over 12 hours, they're probably put the po uh, put the phones in the pocket because the batteries have gone <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> Jonah Duran, two-run home run in the fourth inning. Giving the Gators a one run lead. Did not start during the regular season. First start behind the plate for Jackson Kowar in the SEC tournament. Starting all four games for the Gators to this point. Ask Kevin O'Sullivan how he's handled the pitching staff. He gave the thumbs up. That one bounced up in front of the plate. I was trying to make the point earlier about Kevin O'Sullivan. Yep. Watching games on TV throughout the course of the year, the last couple of years, and conversation that we've had with him and seen him with the media on Thursday before the workout. Knows how to handle players. Knows, I think, when to get on them with the tough love. Knows when to not coddle them, but yeah, back just off be a little. back yeah. off a yeah. little bit. Absolutely. And we saw that in the first inning, I think, with Leftwich from the dugout just saying, hey, calm down. And what he has done here at the University of Florida in 11 years has been unmatched. I mean, right now, he's the greatest coach in the school's history in just 11 years of service. And there's been great ones here. Dave Fuller, Jay Bergman, Andy Lopez, Pat McMahon, and, of course, Joe Arnold. Last year, Florida winning the national title in Omaha for the first time in program history. Announced during the year a new ballpark on campus for 2020. So new facilities, new amenities. New ballpark is going to be built near the softball complex, not that far from here. McKeithen Stadium next to the basketball arena and not that far from the football stadium. Lambert to the bag himself. Duran retired. So the Gators with a three-run lead here in the sixth inning. There are the Nuggets. Construction will start this fall. More shade structures for fans. New locker room, player lounge, expanded capacity up to 10,000. I better look and see if I have any eligibility left. I want to get in on that. That's <laughs> outstanding. Can't wait. I'm sure when that was announced, and Kentucky will move into a new stadium next year Yeah. in Lexington, I'm sure there were some coaches around the country saying, great, defending national champions. That's all they need, yeah. New uh -huh. amenities, all the bells and whistles. Will it stay fair? No. Abraham pouncing on it. 
I like the idea by Lippitt. We've been calling for it since Friday. <laughs> someone dropped down a bunt for a hit. That's the first time someone tried to drop a bunt down for a hit in this regional. And we're in game seven. Into Tuesday. Yeah, in the sixth inning. Well, Kevin O'Sullivan, he was hired by Jeremy Foley, and that was a, a big moment and a great hire by Jeremy Foley, the athletic director, um, the ex-athletic director, to do that. Of course, Jeremy also hired Billy Donovan, a young coach, bringing him in. The only difference is Kevin O'Sullivan did not have head coaching experience to come right from Clemson as the pitching coach to the University of Florida as a head guy in the SEC. That's, that's a belief in someone. That really has turned out great. Speaking of Billy Donovan, Gators yep. were struggling down the stretch, dropping six of seven. Kevin O'Sullivan went to the Rolodex, and last week before the regional got underway, Billy Donovan celebrated his 53rd birthday, former Gator coach, now the head coach of the Oklahoma City Thunder. And he came out and talked and addressed Kevin O'Sullivan's team. And it was a great talk. He fired him up, and he gave him these little bracelets, the one that's the blue one, and it actually says S-W-A-G on its swag, which means strength when adversity grows. And he told the story how his his back-to-back -back collegiate basketball team had to do that. Wilson able to recover. Because it retired. what they were relating to was here's a team, College World Series, going for their second Back to going for their back-to-back -back championship, just like the basketball team that Billy Donovan had. And what he ended up saying was, hey, look, we struggled getting into the SEC tournament. We ended up winning our championship. You guys are scuffling a little bit, losing six out of seven. Uh, you know, you've got to dig down deep, and you're going to get the naysayers. And when, when, when adversity grows, that's where you have to have strength, and that's what the swag bracelet comes in just a reminder let them know that when they were going for their second straight in 2007 they had adversity but then they won nine in a row in the postseason and the Gators baseball program last year their first national title now they're looking for back to back and join some elite company This would be a big night for the Gators in terms of their program history. Maldonado, the batter. Yeah, if they, they win this game, you think about this, going into the Super Regional, and, and Auburn is already a team that if the Gators hold on and win this, you're looking at a Brady Singer, Casey Mize rematch from this season. And there you go. Now, this game's not over yet, but it's looking a lot better for the orange and blue. Add into the fact, three first-round draft choices taken on Monday night as the Major League Baseball draft for 2018 opening up. It'll continue on Tuesday, wrap up on Wednesday. India to the Reds at number five overall. Singer, 11 wins on the season, going 18th to the Kansas City Royals. Then his teammate Jackson Kowar selected 33rd overall by Kansas City. This is a typical Nelson Maldonado at bat. If he falls behind, just start fouling off pitches. A lot of times he'll end up working a walk. Florida Atlantic battling. Down 5-2 right now. Up 2-0 after the first inning. John McCormack and his Owls. 43 wins lost in the opener on Friday. Elimination game Saturday, check mark. Advance to play Sunday, beat Jacksonville. Off Montez and into left field. Maldonado aboard with a two out base hit. Boy, he's swinging it good. Went the first two games without a hit, but since then, wow. He did walk four times in the first two games. Watch him scorch this. This eats up Montez. Watch your lips.
Maldonado aboard. And here is India. RBI base hit the third. Solo home run to add to a one run lead in the fifth inning. He might be looking right side because he's thinking, all right, they've seen me hit home runs. He's going to probably pitch me away. And what has made Jonathan India such a great hitter this year is his ability to go opposite way with power. Something he didn't do last year. Brad Weitzel, the hitting coach, they really worked on it a lot this year and has really paid off. It has made him an elite hitter in this country. A big night for John McCormack and the Owls, no matter what happens yeah, here. No question about it. Because great resiliency, as I said, facing elimination from Saturday on and beating Florida earlier tonight. India takes a pitch inside, and uh, their pitchers, we've touched on it. Zach Schneider, terrific. Five innings, three runs in his first start of 2018, the closer during the regular season. And let's not forget, Tyler Frank drafted 56 overall. We mentioned India, Singer, and Kowar. Tyler Frank drafted by the Tampa Bay Rays organization. And the Rays staying in state. Chris Kosky letting the first base dugout know that he's heard enough. Yeah, he wrote down a little warning. But I can see the frustration here. They had the lead. It's now 5-2 Florida. Clemente retired the first two batters. Maldonado extending the inning with a base hit. Runner goes. Throw down to second base. May have gotten Maldonado. He's going to race for third and make it in standing. Stolen base. Throwing error on Abraham. They're getting really good jumps on Clemente. They're getting good reads. They're reading the glove, and off they go. That ball tails, and it actually hits Maldonado. It comes up and hits him in the rib area. He was rubbing that earlier. Got him pretty good. Craig Bell checking in. And you can see he's holding his side just a bit. Well, pick your poison here. Do you come into India 3 2? If, if you walk him, you got Dalton behind him. And I'm assuming a pitching change. After midnight in Gainesville. No place you'd rather be, right, Steve? That a baby. Well, we almost had this scenario on Sunday night into Monday morning. That's instead, right. Yeah. Monday into Tuesday. Great baseball. Ball four to India. Two runners on. Well, they call him Dalton. And he will stand in with two runners on and two outs. Fouled India with a home run of his own in the fifth inning. Once again, they share the team lead with 19 home runs. Dalton closing in on 60 RBIs. 91 home runs on the year for the Gators. With oh, the 10 keeping, here in the regional. Yeah, they're keeping Clemente in here. Left on right. Going up there, first pitch swinging. Got him on the back swing. See it right here. Watch it on the backlash. Mm. 
Got him in the ear area. He's all right, though. Tough kid back there, as we chronicled. Well, how big is this inning right here? You got Michael Byrne getting ready to come into this ball game to finish it off for three innings. Gators would love to tack on a few more. Maldonado, two out base hit, stole second, took third on the throwing error by the catcher. And now India extending the inning with a walk. Swan, Nowotnik. Poor Coletti and Weston Clemente. High pop first base side. Nietzsche along the line in fair territory makes the grab. And the Gators strand two base runners. Six complete. Checking the app. Florida up 5 2 here in Gainesville. One more to punch their ticket to the Super Regional round this upcoming weekend. Washington, and for the first time to the Super Regional round. Vanderbilt winning the Clemson Regional. Connor Kaiser had three home runs, 10 runs batted in. Vanderbilt, nine home runs in their clinching victory against the Clemson Tigers. Time to feel the Michael Byrne. He's on and enters with a three run lead. You see the numbers, 33 saves, school record. Also set a school record last year with 19 saves on a season. And he's one of the best there is in collegiate baseball. All about first pitch strikes and takes it from there. Picked up a save against Jacksonville on Saturday night. Ran into trouble almost immediately. Gave up a leadoff trouble. A triple and was in trouble with the triple to Ruben Samayan for the Dolphins. Yeah, then got fly out, round out, pop up. And a very weird play was going on because he enticed a foul ball that Deacon Lippett laid out for and almost caught. Had he done that, it would have been a three to three ball game. Everyone appealing on that check swing. Tyler Frank drafted. 56 overall by the Tampa Bay Rays organization Monday night. Well, if they're going to get to a super, they got to figure out one of the best closers in the history of the University of Florida. Second appearance for Byrne. After escaping trouble on the eighth, shortstop Lippitt. One down. Byrne then retired the sign in order against the Dolphins in the ninth inning. When Byrne came to the University of Florida, was under preferred walk-on status. He earned his scholarship. But he was a guy in, in high school, wasn't really a hard, hard thrower, but never he lost two games in his entire high school career. 29 and 2. And I was talking to his dad the other day, and I said, why is his demeanor like it is, just so poised and nonchalant? He says, because that's the way he is. He learned it from playing golf. He said his dad taught him when they play golf, don't let a bad hole affect you when you go on to the next. And he's taking that on to his, his baseball pitching. Two strikes on Cody Wilson, who was at a terrific regional. And it seems like when you face him, you're already at strike one, because he's always going to start you off with strike one. And chance Chances are it's not going to be straight. Wilson 10 hits make it 11 hits here in Gainesville and a one out base runner for the Owls. Love watching this guy at the plate. The inside park home run to me was something to behold that Cody Wilson hit. He was at home plate before the Relay throw was even to the mound. David Miranda, one for two, single walk run scored. He's had had a hit now in 12 in a row. Well, they're the they're best part of their order now to put an inning together. Through the right side, two hits for Miranda. 
Don't count out the Owls. Cleanup hitter Eric Rivera will stand in 0 for 2, a walk and two strikeouts. And represents the tie run. A balk has been called, and that will move both runners into scoring position. And that's huge because now the double play is not in order. Yeah, he started, stopped. That's a good call. Chris Koski, and you saw Rivera point and get the attention of Koski, who's right behind him. Base it here. Florida Atlantic right now threatening. Rivera at the plate. Guy on deck with home run power as well. Lambert. Rivera, six home runs. Pop up, short right field. Dalton coming in, still coming in, makes the catch. Runner comes down the line. But Wilson is going to hold at third base. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Gunnar Lambert will stand in. Lambert, two runs single back in the first inning. One for three. And you see that number, 12 home runs. Michael Byrne, this is his 31st appearance. He's given up three home runs this year. Kevin O'Sullivan is going to pay a visit to the mound. Now he's going to make sure they're on the same page how to pitch him. You've got Montez on deck. And Joe Montez held in check in this game, but he is produced with five base hits and six runs batted in. Over the first four games for FAU. Lambert has the power, and he showed it earlier and over the weekend against the Jacksonville Dolphins. And you know he's thinking the same thing. One swing here, I could tie it, but we're only in the seventh inning. He doesn't have to worry about that. Base hit here, plates two. That home run was a three-run shot, part of a five-run fifth inning on Sunday against Jacksonville. FAU turned out the lights earlier, although the Dolphins got back in with four in the sixth and three more in the seventh. Fly ball, right field, shallow. Dalt coming on. Burn strands a pair. Middle of the seventh, 5-2 Florida. From the Keithan Stadium in Gainesville, Florida, you're watching the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. 116. 16 didn't make it through to the Super Regionals. Auburn against the winner of this matchup, Florida and FAU in the Gainesville Regional. Auburn, Casey Mize, Tanner Burns, Stephen Williams, Edouard Julian. Casey Mize Monday night selected one and one. First overall pick in the first round by the Detroit Tigers. First ever number one overall pick for the Auburn baseball program. Frank Thomas, Greg Olson, both top ten picks in program history. Austin Langworthy, Blake Reese, Keenan Bell, Five, six, seven, two up for Kevin O'Sullivan and the Gators. Michael Byrne gave up a pair of hits in the seventh inning, but stranded two runners, both in scoring position. 
The reason I bring up Byrne right now, Gators 41 and 0 when leading after eight innings this season, just one loss, 40 and 1 when leading after seven. And a big reason that man right there. Three and one on Langworthy. Mentioned Langworthy picked up the victory, provided with the bat last year in game seven against Bethune Cookman here at McKeithen Stadium. Off the end of the bat, Montez coming down the line from third. Langworthy retired, one down. We'll have game two for you Tuesday, and if necessary, game three Wednesday in this best of three women's college World Series championship final between Washington and Florida State. Tuesday's game, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, with Wednesday's, if necessary, game at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Blake Reese 0 for 2 and a walk. Reese at the plate in the third inning with the bases loaded and two down facing Jordan Poor. Hit a screecher back to the mound. Poor knocked it down with his glove and got the out at first base. And Clemente's done a nice job. That was Poor, but now that the lefty, but Clemente's in. He's done a nice job, and he left him in because it's lefty switch hit or lefty in the lineup for the Gators here this inning. Black foul on the ground. And with Michael Byrne in the game, they cannot afford to give up any more runs. He's, that's, that's Michael Byrne, just nice and relaxed at all times. And by the way, hitters hate that when the opposing pitcher is all nonchalant. He doesn't show any emotion, even if he gives up a hit. Drives the opposing hitters crazy. Want to see him show sort of some sort of reaction. Absolutely. Give an indication that you're getting under their skin. Absolutely. And, and you know, he, he, hey, what's he do? Balk second and third. Ho-hum. No problem. Get the next two guys out. Typical Michael Byrne. Weston Clemente, fifth pitcher used by John McCormack and the Owls. A one out walk. Reese aboard. And Keenan Bell will come to the plate. Lars Davis at first base with Reese. Lars Davis, former Triple A player in the Rockies organization, as you look at Keenan Bell. There's Lars. Been a great addition, hard worker. Going to the seeds. Yeah, pretty darn good catcher in the minor leagues. Fellow strikeout victim in his first at bat in the fifth inning. Entered in the top of the fifth as a defensive replacement for Brady Smith. Smith suffering a left hand injury, we think. Going first to third on a single to left field by Horvath. He was cut down. And in the process, injured his left hand. Yeah, when we saw that shot of Brady Smith, he had his finger in ice, so maybe it's just a finger. Gators have had success stealing against West Clemente, the lefty. There's Brady.
Let's see if Blake Reese picks out a pitch here. Fouled back. Nick almost ended up with a souvenir. <laughs> I was playing too low. Young gentleman below us on the carom off the facade of the press box. Got the baseball and then he was pushed walking away from the three guys that he was with I think. Time called for at the plate. This guy's got two. One to keep one to share. All he needs is some ice cream. <laughs> Might be asking for that right now. In his mind, he's having just as good a night as Jonathan India. He's got a home run and was drafted as the fifth pick. I'm sure he's seen 1 a.m., but probably for a feeding when he was an infant. I don't know that at his age now that he's seen 1 a.m. He's closing in on it. Runner in motion. And Reese back to first base. Got the gator on the front of the T-shirt. He's saying, hey, Dad, when's the next game after this start? Because <laughs> by the end of the night, I can maybe get three or four more foul balls. I think he's saying, Dad, school's out. We're up at 6 a.m., right? 6 a.m., right, Dad? Is that what time we're setting the alarm for? <laughs> Eyes front, mister. They're looking up into the press box and looking at one of the monitors, realizing that we're speaking in glowing terms about him. <laughs> Love the smile. He's got his gator shirt on. That's old school Albert in that shirt. Bell comes up empty. Two outs in the inning. There we go. That's the old school Gator logo, Albert, on that shirt right there. Yes, sir. That was like the Ray Graves era and beyond. Thank Dad for bringing you out tonight and this morning. <laughs> there we go. He got the Gator. They got the chop in there. Nick Horvath, one out of three, a single run scored. Reese at first, now a two down. And I don't look for the Gators to sit around here. Blake Reese, been getting some good jumps. Martin Lennox, certainly within striking distance. We saw that in the top of the inning. If you can catch Wes Clemente and you can recognize that he's going home, he's got a slow delivery time like most left-handed pitchers do, somewhere around 1-5, one, 1-6. One, Anything 1-5 or higher is really slow. You can get a great jump. And that was right at 1-5. That's from the time he starts his windup to the time it hits the catcher's mitt. And that's why you see... Coaches at first and third usually with a stopwatch, you're timing it to see what that delivery time is, and that's always a key. You can see Lars Davis got the stopwatch in his hand. They know it's a slow delivery time. He just relayed that. Look for him to take off one of these pitches. Now Clemente steps off the pitching rubber. Larded Lennox. Winning game six, forcing what we have here in a game seven of the Gainesville Regional. Pop-up foul back our way again. And the gentleman who pushed the other guy earlier is going to go down the runway and try to get that one. Hopefully more, no more uh, fisticuffs. There we go. A high five. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. When you're pushing one o'clock, there's some really good opportunities for foul ball, so... In the, if you're in the area, 
<laughs> Come on down. You can have a good opportunity to get one. That gentleman with two. Two and two on Nick Horvath. Inning over. Two strikeouts for Weston Clemente. Reese left stranded. On to the eighth we go at McKeithen Stadium. 5-2 Gators on ESPN+. Plus. A 5-2 ball game right now. Members of the women's softball team coming home from Oklahoma City. Talked with a few of them today. They were signing softballs and helmets during their meetings and just getting together. Arrived back home in Gainesville yesterday. Yeah, their coach Tim Walton, back-to-back -back champions as well. And Tim Walton actually played in a college World Series and won it for a member of the Oklahoma Sooners. Joe Montez, 0 for 3 in this ball game, but five hits and six runs knocked in. Montez and Cody Wilson. And Byrne makes quick work of Montez here in the eighth inning. Look at Michael Byrne just stalking and give me the ball. It's amazing. It's down the middle, but because if he gets so much movement on other pitches, you're looking for it not to be down the middle because that's rarely where it ends up when he's pitching. 11 strikeouts for Leftwich, Mace, and Michael Byrne. Leftwich, career high eight over four innings. Base is empty for Jared DeSantolo, who is one for two with a single and a walk. Kevin O'Sullivan does not want to have to go back to the bullpen again. Opportunity for Reese. Two up, two down. Well, Kevin O'Sullivan knows that when this guy's out there, he's feeling pretty darn good about the game. And he's got it rolling. Is Brad Weitzel? On the left, on the right, Craig Bell, and Sully in the middle. What a great coaching staff. Of course, we saw Lars Tate earlier, or Lars Davis, I should say. Richie needs the opposite way. Dalton will cut it off on the line. Needs will turn first and hold there with a single. Yeah, a little bit of life. You're down to your last four outs. You got to make it happen. Nietzsche with his fifth hit. And those five hits, he's got one home run. Kevin Abraham stands in. He has struck out in all three at bats tonight. And down in the count, 0-1. It's like a broken record, huh? Down in the count, 0-1. You say that almost every time Byrne throws his first pitch. O two. 2 So when you fall behind, you end up extending the strike zone. You end up swinging at a pitch that's nowhere near the zone like that. Now you're 0-2. Potential tie run on deck. Burn facing his ninth batter. He's gone. First pitch strike on eight of the nine. Horvath makes the catch letter high. Side retired. A runner left. Middle of the eighth inning. Florida five. Florida Atlantic two. NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by the Capital One Venture Car. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by AstraZeneca. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals here in Gainesville presented by Capital One. Weston Clemente, two and two thirds, one hit, no runs, walk two, struck out three, gives way to Blake Sanderson, who was the starter for FAU against Jacksonville on Friday night on day one here in Gainesville. And that was at that time considered a little bit of a roll your dice move, but he actually did a nice job. It was the fact that FAU did not hit Chris Gow and the Jacksonville pitchers that night. 88 to 90 on the fastball for Sanderson. 
Also throws a slider to change. No room for error for FAU right now. They have to keep this at 5-2 to two going into the ninth. Jonah Duran, two-run home run back in the fourth inning. That put the Gators in front, 3-2. They have not trailed since. While we have a moment, want to acknowledge those who have helped us here over four days in the booth. They've been with us since game one on day one and pitch one. Hank Stewart, who I didn't realize is in and out of the booth. Absolutely, a tip of the cap right there. Thank you. Our camera operators, thank you. Hank Stewart in the booth with us. Natalie Morrison. And Dan Foran, who has uh, provided us with our in-game stats throughout the course of the weekend and into Monday and, well, into Tuesday as we now approach the 1 a.m. hour. Our producer, Matt Bartley, our director, Mike Griffin, Greg Rothberg, Meg Powell, Joe Garofalo, Duran hit by a pitch, leadoff base runner here in the eighth inning. Sanderson coming in. It's the first batter that he faces. And back to the top for Deacon Lippitt. Fastball, two seamer runs up, hits him right in the shoulder blade. It's a big, strong guy right there. It's going to take more than that. Get him out of the game. I mean, he's a big story this whole regional. What he's been able to do. Gave the Gators the lead tonight. Three home runs in the four games. And he's caught every inning behind the plate, including two Sunday, or rather Monday into Tuesday. It's one of the most interesting stories of his entire 2018 regional. Guy in his fifth start of the season has made that big of an impression. And he's had to do it with pressure on him with J.J. Schwartz out of the lineup. There's J.J. itching to get back in. He's hoping Super Regionals. The Gators can hold on. As you said, the Auburn Tigers... I'm sure they're watching this intently to see who they're going to be playing. Two on, a hit batter, and a walk. Winner of the regional. We'll move on to the Super Regional round and face Auburn this weekend. We're getting closer and closer to uh, the Super Regional round. That is going to be all for Sanderson, allowing the first two batters to reach. And the redshirt junior will head to the dugout. We've seen that gentleman before. We'll see him again with two on and nobody out when we come back. One a.m. Tuesday morning. We are still waiting to punch one last ticket to the round of 16 in the Super Regionals. The winner of this game, best two out of three this weekend against the Auburn Tigers, Duke. Texas Tech, that's your matchup. Number five national seed, Arkansas, on its way to the Super Regionals. Texas and Tennessee Tech. That's a lot of offense that we could see this weekend between those two schools. Cal State Fullerton into a Super Regional. 
for the 14th time facing Washington going to the Super Regional Round for the first time in school history. Vanderbilt winning the Clemson Regional, Stetson, and Oregon State and Minnesota. Minnesota out of the Big Ten, first Super Regional in school history. And if Florida holds on here, by my count, it's three guaranteed SEC teams going to Omaha. And only three teams that made it to Omaha last year will advance to the Super Regional round. Florida State out in two games in Tallahassee, losing in heartbreaking fashion to Mississippi State on Saturday. Maldonado bunting against our old pal, Drew Peden is now on, and Peden has just done a terrific job in relief for John McCormack. I mean, he's just been a warrior in this regional and a big reason why they're here in this seventh game. The one run he allowed, a home run to Deacon Lippett in the ninth inning in game one earlier tonight. That turned out to be the final score, 7-4, with Lippett's solo shot in the ninth. Duran at second, hit by a pitch. Lippitt at first, walked. We've and already seen two box tonight. Peden was a great move to second, trying to keep the runners as close as possible. But that was an obligatory one just to see if Maldonado pulls the bat back or does he show bunt again. Nelson Maldonado, two base hits. The way they're charging in from first, I would not be surprised if he shows bunt, pulls it back, and swings, or just flat out just swings regular. That's an aggressive move by Lambert, the first baseman. He's in his face. Gators, a team that does not bunt much. Big power team. Did not square around. Well, Gunnar Lambert yeah, coming he, way in from first. Well, he showed bunt, and then he pulled it back, and, and now Lambert has got to rethink this. Lambert at first base was almost closer to the pitcher's mound on the last pitch than he was to the first base back. Needs and Frank up the middle. Montez at third. Well, now with two strikes, they move back to double play depth, one would think. India and Dalton back to back home runs in the fifth. And they loom. India on deck and Dalton in the hole. Michael Byrne in relief, two scoreless innings so far. Full count, 3-2, with nobody out. I mean, he's got to make a pitch here, otherwise it's going to get ugly, because you got India and Dalton looming. And the Gators with a three-run lead and one of the best closers in the history of the school, if not the best closer, who's got it rolling tonight for the Gators, Michael Byrne. Maldonado, you see him go to the dirt there. We've seen him maybe one, we know one at bat where he wore a batting glove on the low hand, the left hand. And now Abraham out to the mound to talk with Peden. Well, I get it. I mean, this is a big pitch. They better make sure they're on the same page. I mean, that runner at second base, you're going to give different signs, and maybe they're not seeing it eye to eye. Well, he's looking at it, it's one o'clock and you know it's moving along, but this is a big pitch. <laughs> Base is loaded. That me man is in need of some coffee. We're right there with you. Well, they're sticking around because they know. What's at stake? One of the bus drivers, bus driver from FAU. 
India, first pitch swinging, down 0-1. India RBI base hit in the third inning. That got the Gators on the board. And it made it a 2-1 ball game. India solo home run to start things off in the fifth. He just wants to put a stamp on this game right here. India has one of the three grand slams this season for the Gators. Maldonado early on in the year against Rhode Island. India in conference play against Arkansas and Blake Reese against Georgia. Two ball, one strike count. First three batters have reached here for the Gators in the eighth inning. The corner infielders are going to go home on any ball hit to them. They're going to go double play up the middle. You can see right there, they're in. They're going to go home, try to cut down a run. Two and two. Peden, the seventh pitcher used by John McCormack tonight. Did he go around? Yes, he did. Says first base umpire John Bullock. Boy, Peden continues to impress. Gets himself in a situation facing Jonathan India. Bases loaded, nobody out, and gets him to chase a slider. Couldn't hold up. Will Dalton. On base three times, single walk, solo home run. Boy, I tell you, this Drew Peden has been impressive because he looks like he's throwing as good as he did in game one. This entire regional, when called upon, he's delivered, but tall task here. Peden to the plate, and they get the force out on Duran. That was a terrific play. And think about this great athletic play to get the force out. Keep this at a five to two ball game. Almost like a swing and bunt. He's got to pick it up barehanded, one motion, throw it, and Abraham has to keep the foot on the base. India and Dalton might walk Peden to the bus tonight. <laughs> they have had all sorts of fits with the right-hander. We saw the bus driver a few moments ago. Here's Langworthy, bases loaded, two down. We tip our cap to Drew Peden no matter what here. I mean, he's, he's the guy that John McCormick says wears the Captain America t-shirt under his, uh, his undershirt. He's been a superhero in this regional for that ball club. Well, if he gets Langworthy here, I'm all for him ripping that jersey off and showing it to us. Two strikes on Austin Langworthy, who was 0 for 4. And he was the guy that if they had gone later last night and started the game, what, 11 o'clock, he was going to stay in. He closed out the first game against Jacksonville. They were going to keep him in to start the game against the University of Florida at 11 o'clock start. That's how much they think of him. That would have been Sunday night. It would have, wouldn't it? Yeah, we're on Tuesday. Peden leaves mm. the bases loaded. We go to the ninth. Frank, Wilson, Miranda, Florida Atlantic down three runs against the Gators. Kevin O'Sullivan's Florida Gators, last year's national championship team in Omaha, three outs away from advancing to the Super Regionals this weekend. Auburn waiting to find out who they're playing. FAU down three runs. The resilient bunch facing elimination since losing on Friday against Jacksonville. Tyler Frank, Cody Wilson, and then Miranda, top three due up for John McCormack and the Owls. Tyler Frank, 0 for 3 and a walk. 
One ball, one strike count. Frank again selected 56 overall Monday night of the Major League Baseball draft. Junior, outstanding three year career so far. Breaking ball, left center. Horvath going back, going back, reaches up on the run, makes the catch. One away. That's a guy with 13 home runs putting a charge in it, and Nick Horvath gets a great jump. That's a lot of ground he's covered. Knees to the wall. That's his key right there. His knees go where he's running. He doesn't side chop, and he's able to cover ground. And a little bump against the wall for good measure. Cody Wilson, 11 hits. India at third. Wide throw, one out base runner for the Owls here in the ninth. Looks like he had plenty of time on this one. Goes down there. Just didn't have his feet set. Just got to slow it down. Miranda has been on base three times. David, two singles, a walk and a run scored. If he can reach here and put two on, the tying run would come to the plate for the second time in three innings against Michael Byrne. Miranda with his base hit in the fifth inning, extending his hit streak to 12 in a row. Towards first and foul. Quickly ahead, 0-2. Tie and run, potential tie run on deck here. Wilson at first, reaching on the error by India at third. Miranda's got to extend the strike zone to stay alive here. You can't get caught looking. Good waste pitch. Four inches off the plate, he didn't chase. Byrne looking to close this one out. And Notch's second save of the Gainesville Regional. Runner goes from first, swing and a miss. Throw down to second base, high throw. And Wilson in there safely with a stolen base. Yeah, but the big picture, they were giving him the base. Now, I believe that would be a defensive indifference. The big play right there is the strikeout of Miranda. They weren't even holding him on. Almost didn't even need to throw because he was already down there. But here you go. One more out to get to get to the Super Region. Duran out to the mound for a moment. Eric Rivera, 0 for 3. Nope, it's not going to be Rivera. Steven Revilla will come to the plate and a pinch hit roll for Rivera, the cleanup hitter. Revilla is appearing in his third game, but this is his first at bat. Strike one. And on the season, only 11 at bats. FAU facing elimination since Saturday. If somehow Rabia can get on, Lambert on deck has 12 home runs, he would represent the tie run. Florida one strike away. He's going to cut that swing down. They don't need a home run here. They need a base runner. Now the crowd feeling the burn. They only need one more. Florida Atlantic, two runs in the first inning. Gators a run in the third, two in the fourth, two more in the fifth.
Durant, a two-run home run in the fourth inning, giving the Gators their first lead of the game. India, Dalton, back-to-back -back home runs in the fifth. Look for something moving away. Swing and a miss, put in the bucks for the Gators. For the eighth time under Kevin O'Sullivan and for the tenth time in school history, the Gators are on their way to the Super Regionals. Michael Byrne goes the final three innings, picks up his 34th career save, and the Gators are moving on. And this is a team they are going to try to defend this. Kevin O'Sullivan knows he may have J.J. Schwartz coming back for the Super Regionals. John McCormick, what a job FAU did in this regional. But congratulations, Florida Gators, going back to the Supers to try to get the back-to-back -back College World Series championship. 